Hello, and welcome to episode one of That's a Wrap. Once again, my name is Shannon. I did go ahead and post a very quick intro before this episode, so if you haven't heard that yet, go ahead and listen to it. It is just explaining the premise of this podcast, what to expect from myself and this podcast. So go ahead and take a look at that so that you know what to expect going into this episode. All right, so the first episode we are going to focus on is the first movie of the After series, which is titled After. So a little background on the story, these movies are based on the books of the same name by Anna Todd, but this was actually a fan fiction. That is right, you heard me correctly, this book series and the movie series was based on a fan fiction posted on Wattpad by Anna Todd back in the day and the fan fiction was actually about One Direction and I'm gonna go ahead and say that I used to be a complete lover of fan fictions back in the day. Um, I believe the last fan fiction by Anna Todd for After was probably in about 2013. So it's been about 10 years since it was really last released on Wattpad. Um, I personally did read that fan fiction, so I knew what to expect. And I have not read the actual book series Because it is the same as the fan fiction, it just has different names due to copyright issues. Obviously, you can't publish a fan fiction about One Direction and have One Direction 1 be okay with it. And 2, there is that possibility of slander as well because the main character of the After series, which is Harden, is based off of Harry Styles and I personally do believe that Harden is abusive and I do believe that the relationship is toxic between Harden and Tessa so I would also believe that there would be a possible slander lawsuit if they did not change the names. All right, so I randomly came across this movie on Netflix a couple of years ago, and I did watch it. However, halfway through, I was like, you know, this kind of reminds me of a fan fiction that I used to read. And I was like, the character name sounds familiar. Like, Tessa sounds really familiar. And I did some research on it, and that was how I found out that it was actually based on the fan fiction after, which was on Wattpad. And ever since that movie was released, there have been three movies released. One in 2020, one in 2021, and I believe the first one was in 2018 or 2019. I'm not 100% positive. I probably should have checked on that before, Um, but the last movie of this series is being released this year in 2022, and it will complete the series. So all three of the four films are currently out on Netflix. So if you haven't seen these movies yet, I would highly recommend going ahead and watching them either before or after this podcast. And they are really good. And there are some really popular names in those films as well. So definitely go ahead and take a look. Um, I do just want to advise that it is a romance drama. So just if you're not into those movies, I do just want to go ahead and say it is a romance drama. So the four films that are out on Netflix right now is After, After We Collided, and After We Fell. Um, I have not yet seen After We Fell, but I am working my way there. 
So just a little backstory on After and their stars. Harden Scott, same initials as Harry Styles, by the way, is played by Hero Tiffin. And he is from London. And he was actually in a Harry Potter movie playing Voldemort or Tom Riddle, whatever you want to call him. And the Half-Blood Prince, he played the younger version when Dumbledore went to visit him because he was setting things on fire and was very strange and secluded in the home that he was in. So yeah, that is Hero Tiffin in those films. Now, Hardin Scott is, as I said, based off of Harry Styles in the fan fiction, and the whole friend group is based off of One Direction, with the exception of Landon, who I will go ahead and briefly discuss very quickly. Landon is the first friend that Tessa meets in the film outside of her roommate, Steph, and it is brought up that Landon is actually stepbrothers with Harden and Landon was originally based on Liam Payne from One Direction in the fan fiction. So Tessa is played by Australian actress Josephine Langford. And let me just say my grandmother's name is Josephine and she has passed and I have always wanted to do some sort of dedication to her even before she passed if I were to ever have kids, especially a daughter. And to have a, a young person have Josephine as a name, that, that just brings a different kind of feeling to my soul. Um, anyways, that was off topic, but anyways, Tessa is played by the Australian actress Josephine Langford, who is the sister of Kathleen Langford from 13 Reasons Why. So in the movie, we are introduced to Tessa as being a good girl. She has had the same boyfriend since she was essentially five years old. She does state in the movie that her mother most likely started planning her wedding to her boyfriend Noah when they were about five. So they have known each other for most of their lives. Noah is a year younger than Tessa. So while she is starting college, he is finishing up his senior year of high school. And as I said, the first person that we are introduced to is Steph. And that is her roommate. Her roommate is played by, I am probably going to butcher this name, so I do apologize. I'm not very good with names. I believe her name is Kajia Red Thunder. And she comes across as a baddie. Um, and the reason why I'm saying baddie is her hair. And she has piercings and tattoos, and she is a lesbian. We are introduced to her girlfriend, Tristan. Um, they are, like, on the bed playing a game and talking when Tessa walks in with her mom and her boyfriend. Um, I, I do believe in the fan fiction. I don't believe Steph was a lesbian. I am almost positive Tristan was a male. But I believe that they wanted to bring some diversity into the film, as we will see with Landon and his mom. Um, so I believe that that's what their, their goal was, was to bring diversity into the film, which good for them. She stands for everything, essentially, that Tessa's mother detests and everything that goes against how Tessa herself was raised, which... Speaking of which, Tessa's mother, Carol, is played by the wonderful Selma Blair. And after being introduced to Tessa's roommate, Steph, and Steph, you know, goes and says things about how she is not a freshman and she was bummed that she was being paired with the freshman freshman for her roommate, but that she was going to have a lot of fun. And then Tristan mentions getting into clubs and bars without a fake ID. Um, so obviously something that no mother wants to hear, but especially not Carol. And she immediately tells Tessa that they are going to change her room and they walk out of the room. And Tessa is like, no, wait, mom, let's not do this. Don't do this. She doesn't want to be embarrassed and she wants to enjoy her freedom. 
And so while Carol and Tessa are out having that little conversation, Steph and Tristan, they kind of tease Noah, who is Tessa's boyfriend, and they laugh at him when Tristan goes, you know, I like your your sweater. And he goes, oh, thanks. It's from The Gap. So that right there just shows that both Tessa and Noah are not from the same tracks as Steph and Tristan and soon to be who we're going to be introduced to their group of friends. So skipping ahead, Tessa goes and takes a shower. We all know how the dorm showers are. They are co-ed. And she ends up walking out of the shower with just a towel on and goes back to her dorm. And when she opens her closet door, there's a mirror. And we see Harden in Steph's bed reading a book. And this is the first time we are introduced to Harden. And Tessa turns around and asks him to leave. And which Harden goes, you know, I'm not even paying attention. I'm reading. And he's used to this kind of stuff. So it doesn't phase him. She is not Tessa virgin all the way through and through. She has never undressed with a guy in the same room before. She, I'm almost positive. I have, her and Noah have never even kissed. So I don't even know if they've ever kissed, but. Um, with that being said, um, after they bicker a little bit over him leaving the room, in walks Steph. Steph sits down on her bed and she starts bickering with Harden and she tells Tessa that she is going to join them at a party. And Tessa declines, but Harden kind of gives some peer pressure to Tessa. And wanting to prove him wrong, she agrees to go. And her and Steph get dressed up and they head to the house party. At the house party, she gets sucked into their friend group, which are all these young adults who are pierced and tatted and sexual. They have different hair colors. I mean, they are everything that she was raised not to be. And she eventually gets drunk for the first time ever. And this girl, Molly, who we will talk about, um, recommends that they all play Truth and Dare. And she dares Tessa to kiss Harden. However, Tessa rejects Harden and they do not kiss. And we find out later in the movie that Harden himself had made a dare after Tessa left to have her fall in love with him and then he will turn it off just like And then we eventually see that Tessa runs into a random bedroom and she finds a whole bunch of books. We find out that that is actually Harden's bedroom. So fast forward a little bit as well. They end up being in the same class. So we do see in the film that Molly, Jace, who is another friend, and Tessa and Harden all have the same writing class. This is also where we are first introduced to Landon when it's the first day of classes. So we're backtracking just a little bit. It's right before the party. Um, but this is where she ends up meeting Landon is right before that class. Um, however, the teacher asks the students how many of them have read Pride and Prejudice and half the class raises their hand. Naturally, Harden, Molly, and Jace do not. You know, they're, they're baddies. They're not going to raise their hand or bring any attention to themselves. Um, so when she asks people their opinion in the class, because Harden walked in late, she calls Harden out. And Harden goes into his opinions on Pride and Prejudice, which starts Tessa, and they end up bickering over the whole book. And... At the end of class, we find out that that was essentially, that bickering contest was essentially based off of Harden and Tessa's first meeting and how they feel about each other. And Tessa ends up walking with Landon and Landon is now 
saying that this is where we find out that they are stepbrothers and that his mom is actually marrying Hardin's dad, who is the chancellor of the college, which is in Washington State. And Chancellor Scott is played by the wonderful Peter Gallagher from the OC. And I was so excited when I saw him. It's it's so great when you find actors from TV shows back in the day and they're in current films or TV shows. I don't know. It makes me feel some sort of way. Anyway, so fast forward a little bit as well. Hardin goes and gets drunk even though he doesn't drink, which we later find out why he doesn't drink. Actually, we don't find out in the movie why he doesn't drink. Um, that is in the book. Well, I don't know if it's actually in the book itself, but it's in the fan fiction. So the reason why Hardin doesn't drink is because it makes him act out. It, he does not handle alcohol well at all, and his father is actually a recovering alcoholic. And so he says that he doesn't drink because he doesn't. He stopped. However, we fast forward. He gets drunk and he destroys his dad's house. And Landon ends up calling Tessa and she shows up at the house. At this point, Tessa is in her dorm room with Noah who came to visit. And they went out to a bonfire and they were playing kiss and blow and... Jace tricked Tessa and ended up kissing her in that game and Hardin went off and beat the crap out of him. And when she receives a phone call from Landon, because we find out Hardin was going off about his father and their past and then Tessa gets brought up. So he goes and calls Tessa to see if she can, you know, help with the situation. And so she does. She up and leaves Noah doesn't tell Noah and just shows up at Landon and Hardin's house. So Tessa and Noah end up breaking up because he finds out that she was with Hardin and she ends up pulling away from Hardin as well because you know she just lost her first boyfriend, her possible first love, and she is not happy with the situation especially since Hardin did not have to follow her back to the dorm and cause the issue that ended up ensuring but he did. All right, so we're going to flash forward just a little bit more, and they end up dating, essentially. They move into an apartment together, and then they are spending all of their time together. They're taking baths together. They're very, like, domesticated, and while it's not confirmed that they actually started dating, um, it's, it's hinted that they are dating. I mean, they're living together, and then at some point in time, Molly ends up blowing up Hardin's phone and Tessa reads the text and the texts say that Molly is going to tell Tessa if Hardin doesn't and Tessa and Hardin then get into a fight because she wants to know what she's talking about Hardin is like no don't worry about it do you trust me she says yes and he up and leaves to meet up with a group of friends at a bar and while Tessa is home alone, she gets a text message from Jace. And he essentially sets Tessa and Harden up at this point. So he tells Tessa, you know, I know where Harden is. And meet me at this location, and I will tell you to which he does tell her where Hardin is. However, Hardin is not there yet. So Tessa does show up at the bar, and it's only Molly, Steph, and Zed are there. And Hardin then walks in with Jace. And Hardin knows exactly what's about to go down and tries to convince Tessa to leave. However, Tessa is like, no, I want to know what the what the F is going on. So from there, Molly shows Tessa the video of Hardin creating the dare, and Tessa walks away in the rain, as always with these romance dramas, and also leaves Hardin in the rain. And they stop talking, and then we fast forward just a little bit, and it's the last day of their writing class, and the teacher goes up to Tessa, and 
has basically a manuscript of something that Hardin wrote. And she gives it to Tessa saying, you know, I think this was written more for you than me. Tessa reads it and shows up at Hardin's secret spot. And he miraculously appears there as well. And they sit on the boardwalk and the movie ends. I don't like how it ended. I know that in the fan fictions, the books were all ended on a cliffhanger. But why, why couldn't they have just ended the movie with her sitting on the boardwalk in their, in their space, in their secret space, and just leave it at that? Like, why did Harden have to show up? Like, they literally end it with her head on his shoulder. No communication, no nothing. I'm like, come on, that, that ending could have been so much better. I don't know. Anyways, I'm going to go ahead and say very briefly, because we do find out that their relationship was essentially a dare that Harden created. Um, I don't know if it's in the book. Like I said, I haven't read the book. I've only read the fan fiction, but I have heard the book is essentially a copy of the fan fiction um i do just want to go ahead and say that the dare does go as far as when she loses her virginity to harden it, you know when you lose your virginity you bleed and he takes the sheets and even shows it to the group that he had sex with her and she lost her virginity to him that is not mentioned in the movie it's not even brought up at all um however that's how far the dare went. They don't touch base on the dare itself, um, but that's as that's like as far as the dare went, which is why I strongly believe that Harden is abusive and that their relationship is very toxic. So now that I have finished summarizing the movie, let's go ahead and talk about a little details of the movie so the movie was actually filmed in atlanta georgia at emory university which was the location of the school that they were filming which like i said earlier in the podcast the movie is based in washington state so it was supposed to be filmed in Boston, so yay! There are a lot of movies that are filmed in Boston and on the South Shore and the North Shore, and had I known about this, I probably would have, like, peed my pants out of excitement, to be completely honest, just because, you know, being a fan of the fan fiction and then having that being filmed, that would have been, like, kind of a dream come true. However, that was not where it ended up being filmed and ended up being filmed in Atlanta, Georgia. So the movie did win two awards in 2019. It won the Teen Choice Awards for Drama Movie and then it also won the E! People's Choice Award for the Drama Movie as well in the same year of 2019. The worldwide total for the film was about 69 million. The budget itself for the film was only 14 million. So it was somewhat of a success. Although out of the 69 million, only 12 million came from the US and Canada, which essentially also makes it a flop. It did not bring in a lot of revenue from the US and Canada against the $14 million budget. Um, the movie was also followed by After We Collided, which I will go ahead and discuss that at some point as well. And we will also discuss the actors in After We Collided because there was a shakeup in the cast. There was quite a bit of a shakeup in the cast, if I may say so. A lot of people were recast. And, um... Yeah, so we are also going to go ahead and I am planning on getting a little into Miss Anna Todd as well when I go ahead and discuss the film after we collided. I'm not going to go ahead and discuss it on this podcast episode, but I'm going to go ahead and possibly save it for after we collided. She does have more books than just the after series, and so I will go ahead and discuss her, her and her career very briefly when I make the podcast for After We Collided because it is very interesting 
like she she does have like a normal background nothing too exciting but the series is based off of fan fiction like this fan fiction was a huge success to the point where she was able to sign with a publisher and not only release all of the after books that she wrote on Wattpad but more books after that and that is just so entertaining and interesting I mean can you imagine just sitting at home doing a fan fiction and then all of a sudden you have a multi-book publishing deal so we will go ahead and discuss her and her career very briefly when we go ahead and discuss After We Collided. I'm not sure when I'm going to go ahead and review After We Collided. However, when we do get to that point, I will go ahead and briefly touch on with who Miss Anna Todd is and her background. So go ahead and look forward to that episode. And overall, my opinion on this film was... I believe After We Collided is better. Um, I believe, you know, the, the film itself was really good. And to have some nostalgia attached to it, I believe makes it better for me. I am not a huge fan of romance dramas. They're all the same at the end of the day. However, these two did absolutely amazing. Hero and Josephine did absolutely amazing. And their chemistry off camera let me tell you, you want to find somebody who you can have that type of chemistry with on and off camera. I mean, their relationship off camera is absolutely amazing if you ever watch videos of them. And the success that they both even had prior to filming is absolutely amazing as well. And some of the big names like Peter Gallagher, he was in this film. I mean, and then we'll get into After We Collided has a lot more bigger names. I mean, to be attached to projects with some of those big names, I can only imagine, and I'm hoping that this is the case, that as younger stars, they were able to get some direction and some point of view from these older actors who are very experienced in the field. So I definitely recommend going ahead and checking out After and even the whole After series and perhaps even read the book if you haven't read the fan fiction. I did go ahead and reread re the fan fiction um, a little over a year ago. Um, so I'm assuming the books are the same. I am not 100% positive. The only reason why I'm not reading the book series is because I have already read the fan fiction. So if you haven't read the fan fiction, definitely go ahead and read the books. The fan fictions are still up on Wattpad, by the way. So if you do want to go ahead and watch this movie with One Direction in your head, then I would definitely recommend going ahead and reading the fan fiction because you'll think of the movie completely different with One Direction in your head. So that is all for today's episode. And I hope you did enjoy it, and I hope you will continue listening to That's a Wrap. Once again, my name is Shannon, and I will talk to y'all soon. Bye.